بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم I am Dr. Abir Muhab, lecturer of English Literature at Higher Institute of Art Criticism, Department of Culture Studies, Academy of Arts, Cairo, Egypt. My paper is entitled Feminism as a Controversial Issue in African Literature, a Study of Dainab and Kalai's Selected Novels. The aim of this study is to show feminism as a controversial issue in African literature. Feminism stands in contrast to the common nature of African society, and African women writers undergo great conflict as they are torn between their loyalty to their own culture, their African identity, their aspiration for freedom and self-fulfillment. Many African women writers disregard the term feminism which has been spread in the West calling for gender equality, starting from Flora Nawaba, the mother of African literature, Puchi Imishta, Marima Pash, Mamanda Nagudi Adishi, and Dainab Alkali, and other writers. For a long time, women has been marginalized in African literature. A woman in any African society is subordinate to man. Man is the leader, the head of the family, and the door of the action in the society. Thus, feminism has become a controversial issue in African literature. This paper sheds light on Dainab Alkali's brand of feminism. As she, is, as she is the first Nigerian novelist from the North Nigeria, one of the African feminists who aspired to develop the conditions of women in Northern Nigeria. Alkali brought a fresh voice and a new dimension to women's writing in Africa in the early 1980s, and she explores the women's words through their fantasies, dreams, and inner conflicts, and this paper focuses on Alkali's two novels, The Stillborn and The Descendants, as they represent the development of the female character from the oppressed one in the patriarchal society to the strong-willed, educated, independent woman. We will move on to the, the difference between African feminism and Western feminism. African women writers would like to be called womanist or humanist writers rather than feminist. Feminism is an ideology which refers to the social and psychological restraints imposed upon women. It is an attempt to set women free from African patriarchal society that sees male as superior to female. African women writers would like to be called womanist or humanist writers rather than feminist. As for Western feminism, in the Western world, the feminist liberation movement finally won the battle after two centuries of heated struggle with the works of Paul Mary. Paul Stone Crafts, A Vindication of the Right of Women in 1792, and the American Margaret Fuller's Women's in the 19th Century, 1845. This struggle rate later reached Africa and influenced the work of prominent writers such as El Saadawi uh, in Egypt, Marima Paul from Singal, Puchi Emishta, Flora Nuaba, and Zainab Alkali from Nigeria, and others feminist writers. These female writers Right from African point of view, they also attacked women marginalization, oppression, and submissiveness. Their writings lead to a new brand of feminism related to African literature known as African feminism. It differs completely from Western feminism as it is not man-hater. It appreciates the role of women inside the house as mothers and child peers. We will continue with the, the comparison between African feminism and Western feminism. African feminism believes in sharing power between male and female. It doesn't challenge or react to patriarchal society, but it suggests means and solutions through which women can liberate themselves even in a male-dominated society. African feminism is also similar to womanism that emerged as a response to white feminism. Womanism is a feminist term coined by a black American scholar Alice Walker, who explains that a black feminist enjoys a close relationship with men on equal partnership and not one between the master and the manual. There is also a similarity between womanism and Afri African feminism, as both of them attempt to defend women's rights and abolish all forms of women's oppression in a male-dominated society. Last but not least, African feminism calls for the complementary relationships between men and women and values the role of family as it believes that is one of the pieces of society.
Zainab al Kalai, this is the focus of my study. She is one of the African feminists who aspire to develop the conditions of women in northern Nigeria. There is no doubt that al Kalai's aim is to, de to deconstruct and at the same time to amend the evils of patriarchal society. Something about her biography, she was born in 1950, Orno City, Nigeria. She has been educated at Bayer University, Kano, and she is the first woman novelist from northern Nigeria. She is married to Muhammad Noor al Kalai, and she has got six children. Her works, her first novel was The Stillborn, and it was published by Long Man in 1984. It won many awards such as the Association of Nigerian Author Prize for Prose Fiction in 1985. She also wrote, wrote three stories in German and uh, it has been published in the uh, Hyman Book of African Women Writers. Her third collection of short stories, The Cup Webs and Other Stories, and she is also the, the, the author of The Descendants, The Virtuous Women and The Initiates. Now we will go on to the analysis of the two novels, the point of the study or the focus of the study. We have The Stillborn. The Stillborn, this is Alkali's first novel and it examines the life of women of Hausa tribe, showing how they were always afraid and scared in the patriarchal uh, male-dominated Hausa society. Alkali presented stories of Hausa women that were rarely highlighted by Nigerian male writers and the story recounts the story of three young girls, Lee, her sister Awa and Foko, and their struggles to gain their freedom and fulfill themselves in a male-dominated society. Alkali shows that these young girls couldn't achieve their liberation through marriage, but they could only gain their self-fulfillment through education. Lee, this is the only character that could fulfill herself through education, and being un uh, unsuccessful in her martyr life, she studied until she became a teacher and though she has become a well-educated woman and a teacher, she forgives her husband and returns to him. Thus Lee is a true African feminist as she believes in the value of family and its important role in developing and improving the conditions of the Nigerian society. As for the descendants, this is Alkali's third novel. It reflects the development of women's characters in her writings. Alkali believes that education is the female only weapon to liberate herself from the sociocultural obstacles and it is also her only means to economic empowerment. Thus, through her main characters, Majira Mili, the matriarch of the Ramaita family, though an old illiterate woman, encourages her daughter, Suti, and even her grandchildren to become educated. Suti never gave up her dream as she was encouraged by her mother, Majiria Mili. She not only becomes a medical doctor, but she also becomes the chief medical doctor of a sophisticated medical hospital. Another case of redefinition of the Nigerian woman in the descendants is that of Hawa, the daughter of Suti. She was encouraged by her great-grandmother and her mother to be an educated woman. She acquires Western education and through hard work she becomes a lawyer and she is appointed as the Minister of State for Justice. Indeed, the women in the descendants have come a long way and we are able to change the image of rural submissive women in the stillborn into an educated and independent and self-reliant woman, thanks to the tireless efforts of Majira Mili, the matriarch of the Ramata community. Um, to conclude, this study also examines feminism as a literary ideology which attempts to help women to have a status of recognition and equality in a male-dominated society, like Nigeria. It focuses sharply on Zainab Alkali's brand of feminism as demonstrated in the delineation of her female characters with reference to her male character. Alkali points out that the woman's destiny lies in her hand and that true emancipation of women can only be realized through education and hard working. Consequently, there is a dire need to re-evaluate and redefine gender roles in African society. Richard Ali, the author of City of Memories, described Zainab Al-Khalai as an iconic person for us in the North as first female writer. He said, Al-Khalai is not a feminist and she agrees with it. View that she is not a feminist, we should approach her with more nuisance than feminism. She should be approached in a more rounded manner. Thank you.